Uh, would you believe uh, this weekend is the midweek point of the Premier League season? That is in terms of time, not games play. We know that. We ask Focus Friends, Five Live, Ellis James and John Robbins to give out some gongs at a high-end location. Have a look. Are you sure this is the right place? Yeah. Remember our agent said this is a chance to sell the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. She said this would be good for our brand. John Robbins and Ellis James here presenting the big one. It's the Football Focus Mid-Season Awards. Well, first up, it's the opening day of the season. Vardy scores, he cups his ear. And in fairness, the fans remain stony silent because they weren't there. Our second nominee is Jamie Vardy, a man who seemingly hates corner flags as much as he loves scoring goals. Jamie Vardy, the hero again. And finally, that choreographed handshake between Pogba and Bailly that Ellis and I would recreate now very accurately, but we would be breaking the law. And our winner in the celebration category has to be Vardy cupping his ear to an empty stadium. Ellis, uh, you're a big fan of manager moments broadly. Any big ones stick out to you from the past? The big three that stick out from this season are... Fair enough, just ignore the question. <laughs> Go straight in there. Number one, Jurgen Klopp. You try to create again on my cost. You do. A headline. Number two, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. I don't care because they've just been put there out there to fail. And number three, Scott Parker. The fine margins in this division and, and, and you can get punished. And really the first half, I really liked us for the first 45 minutes. Our top manager moment is Scott Parker's audition as Mike Skinner in the streets. There's elements of what certainly we need to improve on. Ellis, what's first on the list of crazy VAR decisions? It's Sadio Mane being offside against Everton by a whisker. Here we go. And in second place, Mohamed Salah. Why didn't you cut your toenails to avoid this nail-biting decision? Ah, oh, well. And in third, it's Patrick Bamford offside by an elbow. Definitely onside. Our winner in this category is Patrick Bamford versus Palace. Oh, goodness me, it's been ruled out. What's his arm got to do with anything? Can't score with your arm. John, arm footballers on their phones a lot. First up, it's Jose reminding everyone of his managerial CV. Second, it's Jose Mourinho sitting on his own on the bus. Finally, who could forget those celebrations of the Carabao Cup semi-final? <laughs> so, Ellis, what's your pick? I think it has to be the third one, Ledley King, because Jose's speaking a kind of colloquial Portuguese and Ledley's laughing along, even though he clearly doesn't know what's going on. Next up, it's the Tom Daly Award for most exquisite dive. <laughs> First nominee is Timo Werner, attempting to take a corner kick and falling over his feet in the process. It's a strange one. Second is Kieran Tierney, who tripped over a ghost. <laughs> and our third nominee in this category is Deli Ali, falling over against Marine. But our winner is Kieran Tierney, who uh, fell over a poltergeist who was not caught by the cameras. As the great Jockstein once said, football without fans is nothing. And in these strange corona times where people aren't allowed in the grounds, football supporters have had to come up with unique ways of showing their support for their beloved club. In the fans category, the nominees are... The Everton fan who rose to the occasion uh, to deliver a little thank you gift to Mr Rodriguez himself. Stockport County fans letting off fireworks outside Edgley Park when they played West Ham United in the FA Cup. Mike Dean has actually stopped play. And finally, those Tottenham supporters who went to the trouble to pay for the game against Marine to be streamed from Marine so that the club could get some much needed funds. And our winner in the fans category is... It has to be Spurs fans streaming the game against Marine when they could have watched it for nothing on the BBC. So there you go, the most sought-after awards in all of sport. And as tradition states, the Football Focus mid-season awards are always held from uh, just a bit of decking near the Thames. A bit like the Oscars. Yeah, but um, imagine the Oscars being hosted by a man wearing two coats. Surrounded by goose mess. If you have any thoughts or disagreements with the winners this lunchtime, please do feel free to get in touch with Dan Walker directly on 075...
Yeah, thanks for stopping there, fellas. Appreciate 0, that. 075. OK, carefully guard <laughs> that. Uh, now, uh, thank you to Ellis and John for circumnavigating the duck mess there. If you had um, a player of the ward halfway through to hand out, where, where would you go? Halfway through, I'd say Fernandez at the moment for me. I know the stats for Harry Kane has also been great, but I just think what he's been able to do in a Manchester United shirt since he's been there in this season has been nothing short of amazing. So for me, it would be him.